afternoon in La Salle Academy. Today is Thursday, May 28, 2020. It is our last day of school for the 1920 school year. Ended pretty crazy, but I hope everyone was able to finish up their remote learning without any problems and that you're ready for the summer. Today we have two birthdays to celebrate. Wilmer from first grade is celebrating a birthday and Larry from third grade is celebrating a birthday today. So happy birthday to both of you and happy birthday to anyone who will celebrate a birthday over the summer. Let's say in Lakesh one more time together. Tu eres mi otro yo. You are my other me. Si te hago daño a ti, if I do harm to you, me hago daño a mí mismo. I do harm to myself. Si te amo y respeto, if I love and respect you, me amo y respeto yo. I love and respect we myself. We have two stories left to read from family stories or cuentos familiares. Remember that each of these is written by a different author and illustrated by the same person. The first one we'll read today is called The Day My Father Danced the Zapateado. This is written and illustrated by Maria Elena Castro, which you might remember was the illustrator of Maria del Flor, the other book we read last week. I must have been eight or nine. It was Cinco de Mayo because a DJ was playing Mexican music in the junior high school cafeteria. When the DJ started playing El Sinaloense, my father got excited. He wanted to dance. My brother and sister, who went to the school, begged my father not to dance. He sadly agreed. Then, out of nowhere, a chubby Mexican woman started making her way towards the dance floor. Before you knew it, she was dancing by herself. My father couldn't help himself and told us that it was ungentlemanly to leave a lady dancing alone. So there they were, stomping and savoring the loud banda music while ignoring the eyes of the kids and the parents. My brother's and sister's embarrassment grew even bigger the next day when they were made fun of endlessly because the kids in the school thought it was uncool to dance a zapateado. From that day on, I decided that if being cool meant that I had to hold back on expressing my culture, then I would rather not be cool, but I would have fun. El día que mi padre bailó el zapateado. Tendría yo ocho o nueve años. Era el cinco de mayo porque... Un animador estaba tocando música mexicana en la cafetería de la secundaria. Cuando el animador empezó a tocar el sinaloense, mi papá se alborotó. Él quería bailar. Mi hermano y mi hermana, quienes asistían a esa escuela, le rogaron a mi papá que no bailara. Él tristemente asintió. Luego, una mujer mexicana gordita apareció de la nada y comenzó a avanzar hacia la pista de baile. Antes de que se dieran cuenta, ella estaba bailando sola. Mi padre no pudo contenerse y nos dijo que un caballero no puede dejar a una mujer bailar sola. Y de pronto, ahí estaban, zapateando y saboreando la música de banda a todo volumen mientras ignoraban los ojos de los jóvenes y de los padres. La vergüenza de mi hermano y mi hermana aumentó aún más al día siguiente cuando los otros niños se burlaron de ellos sin cesar porque pensaron que no era popular bailar el zapateado. Desde ese día en adelante, decidí que si para ser popular tenía que dejar de expresar mi cultura, prefería no ser popular y divertirme igual. The next story is The Little Princess or La Pequeña Princesa and it's written and illustrated by José Lozano. Years ago, I attended school in Juárez, Mexico. I remember a girl named Leticia in the second grade. She was a nice, ordinary girl. Once, she swallowed a tooth, and I remember trying to make her laugh so she'd forget about it. One day, she was chosen as a princess for a talent show. They put up a giant photograph of her and the other princesses in the hallway. Maybe it was because the picture was so big and high on the wall, but suddenly this ordinary girl looked like a little movie star to me. I just loved looking at her picture. The next morning, she arrived with her hair in curls the size of flautas. I was tense the whole day sitting next to her. That evening, the principal crowned her with a little silver crown, and she looked like a real princess. I remained in the shadows with everyone else. I was delighted and awed by it all so much that I could not even clap my hands when they crowned her. La Pequeña Princesa Hace muchos años, asistí a la escuela en Juárez, México. Me acuerdo de una niña que se llamaba Leticia en el segundo grado. 
Era una niña amable como cualquier otra. Una vez se tragó un diente y me acuerdo que la quise hacer reír para que se olvidara de él. Un día la escogieron para ser una princesa en una función escolar. Pusieron una fotografía gigantesca de ella y de las otras princesas en el pasillo. Tal vez fue porque la foto era tan grande, pero de repente esa niña sencilla me pareció ser una pequeña estrella de cine. Me encantaba mirar su fotografía. La mañana siguiente llegó con su pelo en rizos del tamaño de flautas. Yo estuve nervioso todo el día sentado a, al lado de ella. Esa noche, el director la coronó con una coronita de plata y parecía una verdadera princesa. Yo me quedé en las sombras con todos los demás. Estuve tan encantado y lleno de admiración que ni pude aplaudir cuando la coronaron. Well, thank you for joining us for our very last read aloud of the school year. Please have a wonderful and safe summer. Bye, everyone.